All right, podcast number three. Here we go. Social media is the topic today. It's the film room, the podcast. <laughs> yes, welcome everybody. We have Luke John Photography, my wonderful husband. And Jesse, um, <laughs> the film room. Film room. Um, wedding videography, wedding yes. photography, Adelaide, South Australia. We do this podcast now. Mm. It's awesome. We love it. It's been a while since we did the yes. last one. <laughs> Sorry we had a- about that. Crazy life, crazy times. Well, we recorded it and then we didn't like it. So we thought mm. we'd do it again. But then there was a holiday. Yeah. So. Had a little break. Now we're back at it. And um, today we're going to talk about, I feel like the number one almost requested topic in mm. a way and what we always talk about with our friends over coffee is social media instagram the importance of it how we use it for your business how we use it um how we think everyone should be using it you know just like i think because we've been like pretty prominent on socials for years um especially like instagram stories um actually posting content um we started on Facebook years ago, obviously, because it was really the only thing around. It, yeah. Um, but yeah, we're just going to take you through how we use it. If you want to get better at it, some of the, the strategies that we use and the way that we, the mindset, I guess, that we have when we go into it and share all of our content and do our stories. Yeah. So we started, well, my business specifically way back when, 2012, when Facebook was the thing. Um, worked really well for us. Like you post anything and everyone you knew saw it, everyone that they knew <laughs> saw it. And this was really great for my business because I'd put up a video or even a photo from a wedding day or something, blog maybe, and everyone would see it. Um, and if you, if yeah. you were on Facebook back then, it was like, if you remember, you would get things like, Jesse liked this video. So, you, it came up you on your own feed. You get a yeah, to go and see it as well. So, that's the kind of organic yeah. reach that Used we had. Yeah. So, we put a video up, 10 people would like it, but then all of their friends saw that they liked it. Mm. And that kind of thing doesn't happen anymore, um, obviously. It also wasn't too saturated, so people were more likely to go, oh, what, what is this thing that they liked? And they would go and see it as but well. That's the reason I'm talking about this, because... This is how all social platforms eventually evolve. They start with not much going on. So the organic reach is huge. huge. Um, And then they eventually get saturated because everyone eventually jumps onto them, pumps all of their content Mm -hmm. into it. And then eventually you have to pay to get your content seen. So when the platforms are young, Mm. you have to really take advantage uh, advantage of it. Um, So we went through the Facebook phase, which is amazing. And now you basically have to pay for anyone to see anything like by running ads. Um, which we've also done for years anyway. but then Which was even better. So we started, even when we still had great organic reach, we started doing the ads back then. Yeah. Which was like, you definitely got bang for your buck. <laughs> Should have spent more. <laughs> Actually, yeah. Um, yeah. And then we went through Instagram and it started pretty good. Like we came in reasonably late. Um, and then now, you know, everyone knows what Instagram's like these days. Mm. You know, you can barely get likes on Instagram much yeah. and followers have slowed right down compared to what it was you know six seven eight years ago and it's really interesting because we didn't know what instagram was for because we definitely did the posts of our coffees and stuff like on the grid mm. even on my business instagram it was just like random things because we we weren't really sure what it was for and then when it just became heaps more popular for normal people to share their lives it was like oh okay this is gonna this is it. This is going to mm. be the place where we people see what we want to share about our business and stuff. Yeah. And then you've got like TikTok now and that's very young. And we've been watching this happen over the last two years where two years ago, people were like, oh, TikTok, that's just for teenagers. Yeah. That's just for 13 year old girls to do dancing on. And that's how Instagram started because Instagram started Used with to be for the photographers t- and teenagers. Yeah. And then it aged up. So now Instagram is the place to be, the standard. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'm watching people say like TikTok, haven't even looked at TikTok, don't even have TikTok, never even seen it. Eventually, everyone will be on it Mm -hmm. and they'll be late adopters again. And they'll go, oh, it's, you know, the reach will be crap. And One one little bonus about people who aren't on TikTok because they also might not, whether they 
are against it or not. They might not understand it and be like, oh, how do I learn to do that? But Instagram has reels now and I've spent a bit of time on TikTok and reels are like, they're, they're so interchangeable. So... Well, reels if, are the reason that... Well, yeah, sorry, reels... Sorry, TikTok's the reason that reels Reels came exist. around. But um, people who were doing reels, good on you because you're getting ready for TikTok. <laughs> like, that's all I have to say about that. We're not even really <laughs> that active on TikTok yet, but it's more the understanding that we should be. Yeah, and, and, and knowing that we will have to, in the mm. near future, move that way. Um, because, yeah, it is the new... Instagram's the new Facebook and TikTok's the new <laughs> the new Instagram. <laughs> um, but yeah, just don't like shun it because you'll we'll all be living there soon enough. Yeah. Um, so I think that like Instagram has been so valuable for both of our businesses. Well, Facebook as well. Um, because when Facebook started, we just or I just taught myself how to work the Facebook ads so that the correct people would see the content and then obviously find us and hire us, Mm. um, which has been amazing. Um, It's obviously more expensive now and harder to convince people now that it does work, Um, but it still does. It's just a little bit more expensive. Like back then, it was just crazy. You know, you could spend a little bit of money and your videos would go forever. Um, Almost guarantee a job Yeah. per Uh, ad. Yeah. About 50 bucks, I reckon, Mm. back then. Um, Yeah, it's a bit more expensive now, but no less... It works. Um, we still do it because whilst we're ranting on about Instagram being the, the place to be now, everyone's still on Facebook. Yeah. Except People are still on Facebook. Yeah. Mm. And Facebook in- integrates into Instagram anyway now yeah. because Facebook owns Instagram. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, I think the main thing that we picked up a few years ago was stories. Um, and like we're both pretty active on being like the talking face on the stories and I know that that's something that people are very sort of shy about, um, hard to get into, very difficult to get your head around. But when stories first came out, I was just sitting there like mindlessly scrolling. You know how you, you guys probably do it as well, you know. Yeah. Like everyone just sits there and mindlessly watches stories and sees what everyone's up to every mm. day. I was like, Jesse, these... I'm just watching people talk about crap. We, you know, you need to start talking <laughs> about. And Jess is like, "What are you? What am I going to talk about?" Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I don't know anything. Like, I'm talk, looking at this like photographer in the USA talk about like how she's setting up a new studio, and it was mm. just this awesome behind the scenes look into businesses. Yeah, and I think that's what people get with us. It's like they get to see who we are, especially if they're in the market for a videographer or a photographer. Because they get to see who we are before meeting us. Mm. Um, And I always picture that if someone's looking at my work and someone else's work um, and trying to weigh up five different photographers and they can't distinguish necessarily the the photos that we put out because, you know, you might not be able to tell the difference between some of them, but you'll definitely be able to tell the difference between someone else's personality and mine because I'm present. Um, and I'm showing people yeah. who I am. Yeah. Um, so you can have that confidence that, you know, at least I've put a face to the name yeah. in the beginning. And, and if you can't meet with them or whatever as well, it's like this: the first port of call is actually your face mm. talking about something. You could be talking about your work or weddings or you could be talking about a dog or whatever, but they just be like, oh, this is Luke. Mm. This is what he's like and what he talks even seeing your face, there are some amazing photographers out there that I don't know what they look like. Yeah. Not, yeah. That, not that it matters, but it's just so, it's so, everyone says it's, it, nice to put a face to the name. I just think it's <laughs> one aspect of it. Yeah, yeah. Like you absolutely don't have to be a talking head. Yes. If you don't, you don't. want to, you don't have to show people your home life. Um, I just think private it's, life, yeah. you know, from our perspective, I think that that's one it's thing that's benefited the way that we use socials like when we were in the usa a couple of years ago pre-covid um the amount of people that would inquire but also tell jesse that they were following her and her like coffee rants (laughs) about because it's so hard to find good coffee in the usa you know and they connected with her on that level Mm. um you know, and we're just talking about coffee. I'm but just like them. <laughs> that connected with people, you know. They, they're they like, this is my person. Yeah. And that's how we got work while we were on holidays. It yeah. was amazing. Plus, they obviously, you know, 
like my work. Obviously, <laughs> like, that's right. <laughs> but you know, I'm if someone, totally if, if you can life. connect with people on a personal level mm. without even having to meet them, yeah, like that's some next level stuff. And yeah. that's what socials let us do. They let us connect with the people. We don't just have to show them our art gallery yeah. and look at all the things I've created and nothing else. And I, I'm pretty guilty of looking at people's stories before I even scroll down their grid sometimes. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm just like, oh, I wonder what they're doing today. Let's find out about that before I even look at what they do. <laughs> well, you might sound weird, but I don't know. I, I really enjoy seeing what people do and hearing what they have to say. And... um. If you aren't posting stories specifically that often, for whatever reason, you think people won't watch or they don't care, I've definitely had all these thoughts. Think about are you watching everyone else's stories? Because if you're watching, they'll be watching. I think people are concerned as well that like, oh, what I put up is crap or what I put up, people don't want to hear about what I have to say about things. And it's like, you know, we're not talking about like, you know, crash hot opinions here it's mm. like i've put up stories about our coffee machine mean making me a coffee in the morning or a daily photo at the life. gym or yeah. the dog or just, just yeah. daily stuff mm. um and the thing that we realized pretty early on is that it's so easy just to swipe across to the next thing if you don't want to watch yeah people aren't going to message you go that story was crap luke you know this is you know, get me some better stuff. They just don't watch. Yeah. And you can see them. I, I, and sometimes I go on and I see the amount of people that have viewed my stories because mm. you can do that in the background. And I can tell if I put one up that people weren't interested in because the numbers drop off. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, uh, mm. no one tells me. No one's like, oh, yeah, couldn't yeah. be bothered watching you today. They just don't watch. They swipe across. And it also doesn't matter. Like, don't be discouraged by it either. Not at all. Yeah. It's funny as well because I've started hearing this thing around where people are like, oh, only 30 people liked my photo or only, you know, only 60 people watched people my... Oh, you, yeah, only 100 people watched my story. interested in me telling them about this thing. And yeah. it's like, if 30 people walked into your house and listened to you talk about, be like, what? <laughs> you know, you making dinner, yes. that would be a lot of people. Yes, a lot of people's attention. You'd you the most attention. popular person ever. Yeah. You know, but for some reason we've got into our heads now that if 700 people don't, you know, excuse me. if 700 people don't see our work, yeah, then they don't care. Then, then no one cares. But if I was like, go and, go and froth your milk in front of a crowd of 700 people, <laughs> you'd be like, what? Yeah. No. <laughs> <It's crazy>. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just, Luke's does a lot of coffee stories. Uh, <laughs> um, um, so Luke's started doing the sort of talking head thing on stories long before I did it and I always was like how like I just could never imagine myself doing it because I'm like how do I look how do I sound but also I'm like what would I even say who even cares about what I have to say um and Luke was like just talk about what you're doing you could talk about you know your videos your editing the the day whatever you want um some advice tips whatever um and I eventually got into it and it was a bit clunky to begin with and it probably will be if you start doing it. But Luke's the best tip ever was he was like, you're just talking to me. Like you're not talking to the big wide world. You're just talking to me. And that really, really helped. And quite a few people have said to Luke, like, oh, you're really great. You do the talking head thing or whatever. And your advice is like, like if you want to do it, you don't have to do it. If you want to do it, just do it. Like, just do it. Like, it's totally normal. It doesn't have to be perfect. The talking head thing. Yeah. Yeah, just chat. Like, let people see who you are. Yeah. Um, like, I'm quite well aware that there's people that are just not interested in doing it. No problems yeah, at all. Yeah, you don't have to. But if you're, you know, if you think that it's something that will benefit you, mm. um, just start giving it a go. Don't worry about what people are going to think because nobody thinks anything. They just move on if they... And interested. more often than not, it'll be like, so lovely to see your face. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like it is. <laughs> yeah. Because it's true. Yeah. I love it when people start like, you know, I'm like, oh, this is who this person is. And yeah. it's funny because like I've been like around the place before. Like I don't have that many like, you know, I've got profile pictures obviously, but I don't really put that many photos up of myself. Mm. Um, and I've been walking the beach, going to a shoot mm. and other photographers have been like, Luke John Photography. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, who are you? Like, <laughs> Or I'll recognize them and be like, oh, are you yeah. this person? But people recognize me because 
of the stories. Yeah. That's the reason. Yeah. Like, no one's gone to my website, to my About Me page, if they're not following me. Yeah, you know? yeah. So, this, you know, and we go to weddings and I've gone, hey, to the bride and I'm Luke kind of thing. And they go, I know who you are. Like, when I've come to assist you is what I mean. Um, yeah, they and they know everything about you and your life. Yeah, how's and your it's dog? Not, it's not, they're always like, oh, it's creepy. And it's like, no, I shared about that. Like, it's fine. Thanks for caring. Like, <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So, you put mm. this stuff out into the public forum and we don't expect people to actually pay attention. I, I really liked another benefit of it is we did a wedding where Luke was on photos and video and we got there and the bride's mum, who is just like the loveliest woman she was so excited to meet us and knew everything about us and she had a present for our dog and everything and we're like this is so nice like what's going on and she was really nervous about having her photo taken or, and just you know by someone she's never met before or she didn't know what you were going to be like or yeah. whatever so she decided to start following us and get to know us and by the time we met her it's like it's like old friends taking my photo she was like i was so comfortable with you yeah. now because i know who you are and i know what you're about oh, and i wasn't really scared of you yeah well i wasn't nervous i guess was yeah. more the, the line it was awesome that was yeah that's really nice it's sort of great to have that instant connection before you've ever met someone mm. like yeah. you know it's not the be all and end all but it's like you you can do that like why not the ice was already broken yes. before we even turned up um this is true so I wanted to talk a bit as well about like how we, like not necessarily about how we do the talking heads, it's a little bit of that, but how we manufacture our stories, say like on a wedding day, because if you've ever watched our content after a wedding, there's a lot of stories that go up documenting the wedding or, mm. you know, putting bits and pieces up. Behind the scenes, what we're doing. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think it's interesting because, you know, I've seen people on, on the socials be like, how are you, how are you doing this? Like how, you know, aren't you busy photographing? It's like, well, when there's any downtime, mm. you know, and there's a few minutes here and there, it's just we try and be conscious throughout the day to snap a photo or take a photo of the back of the camera or a quick pan with the video on the phone of the scene that we're in. Mm. And then we like re- we record all of these videos and photos during the day and then it's not until we actually get home that any of them go up. They're up at like midnight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. So sometimes, sometimes we're like, <laughs> you, you've had a sixteen-hour wedding day, and you're like, like, eyes are hanging out. Content dump. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes but, yeah. they do wait till the morning because it's just you're so tired. Somet- yeah. Sometimes over dinner and stuff. It's so funny because there's wedding days are long days. There's not heaps of downtime, but there can be blocks of downtime just at random moments, and it's like you know, if you can chuck up a story. Yeah, something quick. <laughs> um, but and that's a like a strategy because I know like there's lots of people that have kids and busy lives and other jobs, and it's a good strategy that I try and help people with when they ask me about how do you get time to do it. It's like well, you can record all of your content as you go, but you don't have to spend that time posting it instantly. Yeah, you can, you can sit down and do it as your task. Like yeah, yeah. I don't know, like um. You know, let's say that you packaged up some um, stuff to send out to a couple mm. or you were prepping the cameras for something. You know, you can you can record all of this content through the week and then you can post it Yeah. on Sunday. Or yeah, when you yeah. have an hour at some point during the week. It doesn't have to be, I've recorded it and now I'm posting it immediately. And if I'm not going to post it immediately, I'm not going to post it at all. So, I'm if not people even record are like, it, how do you get the time? You think it's like they mean actually doing the post, writing the cap. The um, putting all the gifts in, you I know, find whatever. What people do is they go, oh, I'm not, I don't have time right now to post about this, yeah. or story about this so thing I that I'm doing. So I'm not even going to record it. Yeah, yeah. It's like, but you can record it and at least have it ready to go, and then put it up later. Yeah, it yeah. It doesn't have to be instantaneous. This is what I'm doing now, and so I'm yeah. going to record it now mm. and post it now. Yeah. Record it all, post it later. Yes. Amazing. Um, and we also wanted to talk about if people are like, what do I post? I don't have anything to post. <laughs> There's so much stuff what to post, What do I man. post? Yeah, like. I'll take this opportunity to drop in Gary V's name because we're massive Gary V followers. Mm-hmm. Gary V E E, if you're on Instagram. <laughs> he is a social media master basically um look if you can get past his energy <laughs> if you can understand his energy then 
it's good. But if you know, some people are going to get held up because he does curse a bit in um, some formats. But mm. the stuff that he says is, as far as I can tell, right. Mm. But anyway, moving on. <laughs> um, I've lost my train of thought. Post fifty pieces of oh, what is that a post? Is what he Do- would say. That's right. Document, don't create. Yeah. It's like you don't have to put up perfect content all the time or what even is perfect. Yeah. It's like any content, you can document your life. It doesn't have to be your life. It can just be what you're doing. Mm. I've posted stories um, while editing photos, before and afters. I've, um, you know, when I've got a program that lessens the size and makes the photos physically smaller in memory, and I've posted that because it looks like a slideshow throwing up when the program's running. <laughs> I've posted that. Yeah. Stick a song over it. Uh, you know, <laughs> I've just scrolled through a gallery that I've just delivered. Post that. Just you any know? anything in the process. Making coffee. I'm at the gym. I'm taking the dog mm. for a walk. Just document your life. You know, even if you're starting a business, document the stages you're going through. Yeah. I don't know how to get an ABN. I'm struggling with this problem. Um, oh, I found how to get an ABN. There you go. This yeah. is what I did. And somebody show other people how the stages of you building your business and you'll probably help other people. When as I was well. watching this American photographer, I loved watching her studio come together. Mm. You know, she gutted it and then was, you know, the floors went in and the walls went in and she was painting and it was like you were watching this Thing development. Come to life. You were, yeah. You know, it's like, you know, you don't just watch the last episode of the block. You want to watch how it got there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you would still watch the last episode of the block anyway, but you want to see how it got there. It's part of the it's part of the journey. You're more emotionally. It's not invest- as exciting. <laughs> anyway, anyway, but yeah, <sighs> that's so funny. Yeah. Um. But also, if you don't have anything to document, you can. What have you already got that you can post? If you think you've got nothing to post, find something that you posted six months ago. If like you're, If you're a wedding photographer or videographer, you mm. have so much content to post. Like, and Your service is actually creating some form of content. Therefore, you've got content <laughs> already. You get, yeah, you get content by virtue of what you do. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's not like you're a tradie and it's like, oh, unless I... You know, you then have to take a photo of the thing you created. Yeah, yeah. You know, we're photographers. Yeah, we, yeah. <laughs> we, yeah, we do our thing, and then mm-hmm. content just exists. Um, so true. But a few years ago, we were talking with some people who are now very good friends, but um, were just becoming friends at the time, and they were like, "Oh, Luke, you're full time um, photography now in weddings," and I wasn't at the time, and I, I think I'd only shot something like four weddings, and I was like, "No, I've only shot four weddings recently." And like, but you're posting all the time. I said, "They're the same weddings." Yeah. <laughs> I'm posting different scenes or the same content over again. It's just that the feed is so saturated that you don't even notice that you've seen this before. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, uh, there's this mindset that's like, okay, well, I posted that shot last week, so now I'm not allowed to post Mm. it again. Or I don't know. And also, and and even if you are like, oh, people know I'm resharing this or whatever. First of all, who cares? Second of all, find an excuse. Happy one year anniversary. Happy two year anniversary. Like mm. <laughs> put up a yeah. photo from a wedding. There's always yep. a reason. A couple of people doing that now. It's like, yeah, yeah. happy anniversary. And the anniversaries move. So like, <laughs> you know, a, a Saturday wedding last year is now a Friday or yeah, a Thursday yeah. or something. So it's like on Thursday, you've got content. Yeah. On Friday, you're at a wedding. <laughs> on Saturday, you might be at another wedding. It's just, there is more. If you think, what do I post? You've got. I just guarantee you've got something. Yeah. Leave a comment. Throwback. Post if you don't think you have anything, leave a comment. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. And I'll we'll answer you, you with what you can do. <laughs> and even like. Or watch our content. Or watch other people's content. Look like, what, oh, they're what they're posting and just copy it. What's amazing, especially about video, like I, I don't know anything about this whole Instagram leaning towards video and everything. Like I didn't really read into it because <laughs> I'm too busy. Um, but like. I'm like, okay, cool. Let's put up a reel. I just cut out a segment from one of my videos and that's a reel. Like, like you can, you've got so much. Use what you've got. Use it in the different formats. If you've just got photos, you're on your grid, make a slideshow for a reel or for your stories or whatever. Like, 
there's so many things to do and if you're out of ideas, just watch what other people are doing. Yeah. So we also wanted to cover off about how there's, what would you call it, like a preconception that anything that gets posted must be 100% perfect before mm. you post it. Yeah. And we've seen we've spoken to so many people over so many coffees and so many lunches <laughs> about how my website's coming, but it's not perfect yet. My, I want to post stories, but, you know, I can't get it perfect. And there's this I've per- recorded this story over and over and over and yeah. over. Yeah. Well, yeah, I don't know. It's like there's this fear that the content isn't perfect enough for Instagram or it's not a high enough production value um, and people will think it's crap. Mm. And it's like the con- I say to people that the, the content that you – don't post. No, what is it? The imperfect <laughs> the imperfect content that is, you post is, is better, better than, than the content that you, you don't, don't post. post. Yes. <laughs> so it's better to have imperfect content mm. in your brain. Mm. To you it's imperfect. Somebody else it's just content. Yeah. It's better to have something imperfect out there than just blank slate, than just nothing. Yeah. I'm always looking for that circle. Oh, <laughs> the circle around the Instagram yeah. profile picture to say there's a story I f- here. I feel bad because... It's fine, stories aren't everyone's thing, but if I don't see a circle, I'm like, are you still in business? I think the one of the, <laughs> the one of the, <laughs> what, are you there? the one, <laughs> one of the prominent um, <laughs> categories of people I find is musicians, um, because they're professional musicians. Yeah. It's like you know you can sing anytime you want. Mm. You can just go feel like singing a song, sing it, <laughs> and you could film it on your iPhone, but they, but they don't. Well, the ones that don't are like, well, it's not high enough production value. It's just a phone. Mm. You know, I need to have proper lighting and I need to have proper sound and I need to edit it. Mm. And I need to. I've got no idea. I know. <laughs> yeah. I know that you're recording it on an iPhone and that that sounds different to a professional recording. Yeah. But it doesn't matter to me. I have sat there. We've got friends who aren't aren't professionals but are very good singers who put their songs up on their Instagrams mm. and I'll sit there because I like their voice and I like their clips yeah, yeah, and I'll watch their phone recordings of them singing. And you're not judging the recording. I'm not judging the recording. I know mm. it was recorded on a phone. Yeah. So there's, you know, my mind can go, well, that was through a phone. Yeah. That's fine. It doesn't have to be a professional level recording in order for me to enjoy it. Mm. And no one's going to think, oh, this person th- sings on their phone. Like, this is going to and be And not even like the quality. It's like, show us, you're learning a new song to play at weddings. Sh- I want to see the process. Yeah. Other musicians want to see the process. But it's funny, like, you know, we talked before about how, um, as a photographer, our content is what we do. Mm. It's, I think being like a musical person is even better than that because you can do it instantaneously. Mm. Like at least as a photographer, I need to have something to photograph. Yeah, yeah. You know, or but then, you know, you have it's, it within it's, them. It's, it's documenting <laughs> myself other than that. Like, yeah. you know, I might not necessarily be in an artistic setting, but as a, as a musician or a singer, you can just grab the guitar or start using your voice yeah, yeah. anytime you like mm. with your recording device in your pocket. Yeah. Stellar, but I understand the mental block that you have I feel to- like it, it's a quest for perfection for like our friends that we've spoken to who mm. are professionals. And I, and I get it. Like you don't ever want to be seen as not the best quality and professional because it's your job. But it's like, it's also just Instagram. Like no one's actually judging you. Yeah. Put your best it. stuff on your website. The, yeah. You know, yeah. The Instagram and the Facebook and everything. It's just the lead in. Yeah. You know, yes, some people are launching businesses straight from Instagram and only Instagram without a website, but mm. you know, you can you can combine pro level stuff with amateur stuff. Yeah. And people can see what's different about that mm. and why it's different why it's different in production quality. Yeah. It doesn't mean that the connection with the person is less is lower quality. That's nice. Yeah. I like that one. <laughs> But yeah, like we just really want to encourage you guys to try things out. Um, Try documenting Mm. the behind the scenes processes. Um, Try posting more often. People are interested. Mm. Um, Try and take yourself out of the mindset that people aren't interested. Yeah. Um, Just, just do it. (laughs) Yeah. Um, It's, 
I just think it's important. It's all, and it's almost like it doesn't even matter what you post, photos, videos, talking heads, whatever. I just think it's important to have a presence. And I'm not even really talking about stories because you could just be posting on the grid every day. And that do you think that's enough? Uh, I think it. Uh, I think it can be enough. Um, sorry, it depends on what you mean by enough. Because yeah, I know. I don't know. <laughs> there's so much opportunity in the stories. Yes. Like yeah. you could post. A, like traditionally, I remember a few years ago, people were like, "Oh, you can't post more than twice on an Instagram feed. Like you can't post more than two photos a day because you otherwise you'd be spamming the feed." Oh yeah. That has got to have gone out the window by yeah. now. Yeah. You know, if you you just sit there and post six photos over dinner. Yeah. Post six photos over breakfast. Yeah. Post seven photos on a walk. I, you know, practice what I preach. I know I don't post that many <laughs> photos per day, but, but there's I, no harm but in I it. I think I should. Saying. You should, and there's no harm in it. Yes, you're yeah, not gonna. Yeah. You're not going to break Instagram, or you're not. You know, because everyone lives on Instagram, pe- and you know, people are debating as to whether they should post at all or two photos a day, and then end up posting nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Just oh. do something. Do you, yeah. <laughs> you're not going to spam people. You can't anymore. Mm. If people don't want to watch your content, they'll scroll past. I feel like people are cranking out a lot of reels, which I'm very impressed it's by. Because they take a lot of effort like yeah. to do like one reel a day. Whew, that's a full-time job. Yeah. And if look, if you've discovered ads on any kind of social media, you're probably winning. Um, ads for us have been amazing and I like I always think it just came so obviously to me when we started Facebook and I could see that you could run ads mm. and you could target people correctly um and really I know target them really specifically as well without getting it's into amazing. like too much of a big brother yeah. thing I like it because when <laughs> I'm when I look at like my friends Instagrams it's like bikes UFC fishing football fishing <laughs> four wheel drives I'm like not interested in any of that. Mm. Um, so I'm so happy that these algorithms exist to an extent where it can be tailored to your own interests and yeah. you don't see the content that you don't want to. Mm. Um, so anyway, ads are great. Yeah. <laughs> happy to chat to people about that. If you need to leave me comments, I'm pretty much an open book, Luke, but it's and he's, a Luke's massive Luke's very topic. good at them. He definitely, definitely built my business on it. Because in a, and again, talking about just how incredible social media is, we're talking about ads costing us 50 bucks back in the day, a bit more now, but still dirt cheap in the scheme of things. To have this availability and also what I like about stories, stories are free, get your face, get your service, your art or whatever in front of people for free. Because back in the day, you're paying for TV commercials, newspaper, yellow, yellow pages, like we're talking thousands and thousands of dollars. This is like a you are given the biggest gift with social media because you could not do one paid ad and you could still have a really successful business. But then doing the paid ads just like next level and it's just like it's it's so good. I think our like fear is that people aren't using Instagram or social media or whatever to its potential because we're so lucky to have it. Like, we're so lucky to have it, use it. Yeah, so like prior to any social media coming out, Mm. you could build a website. Mm -hmm. And the only way that you got traffic to the website is by people stumbling across it. Or, or word of mouth. Or Google something. ads. Oh, yes. Well, sorry. we weren't, we didn't live in this era. So, uh, yeah. Sorry, we lived in this era. We didn't have businesses in this era. Mm. But you had to pay for your advertising. And before Google ads came along, it was email. And before yeah. email came along, it was the yellow pages. Yeah. So you always had to pay for s- some kind of attention. Mm-hmm. People didn't just stumble across your content. Yeah. You know? And once upon a time, they had to physically drive past your shop outside of word of mouth. They had to drive past your shop to discover it See the or signs. find it in the yellow pages. Yeah. Like the gift we have been given for a free service that you can now talk to anyone. You can DM any business. You can put content out that shows who you are and what you can do for free and no cost as a base and mm. that to go anywhere 10 likes, 20 likes, 30 likes, doesn't matter. 
Um, and then you can pay to have that go to more people who are actually relevant. Yeah. Like when people, when people used to drive past your house, they had to want to be need a mechanic. Oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah. When, people, <laughs> when people drove past your, your store, store, sorry, yeah. they needed to want to buy paint or they needed to have need a photographer. The right be, people uh, had to drive past. The right people had to drive past. So, yeah, yeah 2,000 cars drive past my um, shop every day. Like, that's great. How many of them need your service? Yeah, you yeah. You can actually tell the social platforms. You can choose the cars. To <laughs> show your content to relevant people. Yeah. And, yes, it costs money. But everything else you've ever done on social media was free. Yeah. That's nuts. <laughs> yes. That's so funny. Well, I always hear about um, like your social media pages or whatever are the signposts to your website. So, it's like the website is the, the shop now mm. and no one's driving past. The storefront, if so you, you will. Yeah. So, you can put your si- signs on other people right in front of people's faces on their social media. It's where their eyeballs are. Yes. Don't need TV ads anymore. Mm. You know, serial commercials at the time the, the um, what are they called? Cartoons are on and beer ads and car ads when the football's on. It's funny because the targeted advertising has been done forever. Yeah. It just wasn't people, as specific. Yeah. It was still really generalized. Funny. Yeah. Anyway, that's our hopefully 30 or 40 minutes of very quick social media yeah. thoughts. I, f- I feel like so many people, you're all on Instagram. You all do get it. I feel like we just want to push that. It's so good. Use it to death. Like just use it. Like mm. it's such a gift. Um, but also for the people who still, they, they do get it, but they're scared about it not being perfect. What will people think or whatever? Stop caring what people think. Stop apologizing for jumping on stories to talk about your business. It's what it's for. It's what it's for. And I just think go for it. Like why not? Because soon the next thing will come along. Mm -hmm. You'll have to learn that and get around that as well. And it's just the way that it is now. Yeah. Hmm. Cool. Cool. Yeah, so if you guys want to know, want us to go into any more detail about any of this, we could talk about it for a very long time. Um, but let us know. We're always accepting like recommendations or of like, you know, I'd love to hear you talk about this. We've got like a long list getting made of people that are coming to us with common themes about the things they want to hear us talk about. Mm. Um, but yeah, leave us comments, um, ask us questions in DMs and whatnot. We love that. Um, so this is going to go on IGTV if you want to watch us. Mm-hmm. It's on Spotify, The Film Room, The Podcast. Um, the IGTV is on The Film Room, so the underscore film underscore room if you're on Instagram. It'll be on YouTube as well. And I think it filters out to the other. I don't know, there's a whole bunch of them. Yeah. The um, podcast I, I just want to add that um, we think our businesses are doing really well. And really, we built it on social media, I believe. We've never we done an expo role. or anything. Nah. We just like we just believe in it so much because we feel like we're proof of what it can do. Not that we're the most successful people in the whole universe, but like when I think back, we started Facebook, now here we are, and it's just it's really powerful. So we hope you got something out of this. <laughs> <laughs> Leave us comments, please. If you liked it, tell yeah. us. If you didn't like us, tell us what we can fix. Thank you very um, much for 40 minutes of your time. You guys are legends. Yeah. Bye. Bye.